What's up, Marvel Snappers? Welcome to another Math Breakdown. Today we're going to take a look at a few of the locations that add cards to your deck and how they impact your gameplay. First, I wanted to touch on location rarity quickly. For those that don't know, locations are categorized into four rarities, ultra rare, rare, uncommon, and common. The locations we're going to cover in this video are all common locations, but I was curious about how common are they? I looked everywhere for numbers, and the only place I found any mention of numbers was a fantastic video by Jeff Hoogland that I'll link in the description. In that video, he says common locations are 13 times more likely than ultra rare, and then provides some numbers for the other rarities. This still doesn't equate to raw probabilities, so working backwards with these numbers, we can try and figure something out. I do not know if these numbers are truly accurate, as there can be other variables we are unaware of, but it was a fun little exercise. Now this hinges on these formulas being correct, but it results in the probability of an ultra-rare location appearing being 3.7%. We can work backwards from there, and we get the probabilities of common, uncommon, rare, and ultra-rare being approximately 48%, 30%, 19%, and 3.7% respectively. Again, I want to state that I don't know if these are the actual probabilities in the game. These are just some numbers I was able to calculate out of some vague information. With 58 common locations currently in the game at the time of recording, any particular common location could have a 1.7% chance of appearing. How the game actually handles this is unknown to me though. If you do know, please let me know in the comments. Now let's start with Subterranea and look at how it mucks up your deck if it appears on turn 1. You will draw your initial opening hand of 3, and then 5 rocks get shuffled in before you draw your card for turn 1. The table shows the cumulative odds of drawing a specific card by a particular turn. In a normal game, the odds are definitely in your favor to have a desired card by the final turn. With Subterranea, it is much closer to a coin flip. This can make knowing when to retreat much harder, as the opponent is less likely to have their bomb than normal. We can also look at the odds of how likely you are to draw those rocks. You're basically guaranteed to draw at least one, and if you've ever drawn all five, that's some really bad luck. We can take a quick look at the numbers if Subterranea is the second or third location revealed. It doesn't change much, but I thought the numbers were interesting. Feel free to pause if you want a better look, but I won't linger on these. One thing to note is that if Subterranea is the third location revealed, in a normal game it is impossible to draw all five rocks as you will only be drawing four more cards. Subterranea is particularly nasty if you're looking to draw a combination of cards. If neither card is in your opening hand, the odds of drawing both cards in the future are incredibly low. These numbers show that if you're reliant on drawing this combo of cards, retreating is likely a good idea should the opponent snap. Moving on to a pair of locations that are similar to each other, Lekugia and Vibranium Mines. These also shuffle cards into your deck, but gives you control of if and or when that happens. A ton of variables come into play here, but we can look at how they impact the odds of drawing a particular card on the given turn. For example, let's say you're playing Wong and by turn 3 you still haven't drawn it yet. The odds of top decking it on turn 4 under normal circumstances is 16.5%. We can then see how having added in additional cards impacts those odds. The same assumptions are being made for the other rows. If you haven't drawn the particular card yet, how likely are you to top deck it on that turn? If you are still looking to draw the desired cards from your deck, especially if it's multiple cards, it is highly advised you avoid playing to these locations at all cost. We can also look at the odds of drawing one or more of these added cards throughout the game, should you have added any. This table assumes that if you added six to your deck, then you added them on the same turn, which won't always be the case. If you played a card to one of these locations on turn 1, you have an 87.9% chance of drawing one of the three added cards by the end of a normal game. We are also going to assume you can't play two cards on turn 1. There are a lot of variables to get more specific numbers, but these numbers can give you the idea of the odds at work. 
They are especially helpful in the case of Vibranium since you may actually want to draw them depending on your deck or the circumstances on the board. As a bonus, we're going to take a quick look at the Raft. I averaged out the power of all available 6 drops in the game at the time of this recording. That number worked out to 8.48 power. Now this doesn't account for the ability on those cards, but this can be a number you can use when calculating your opponent's range if they got the card from the raft. I was mostly just curious, so don't take this number too seriously. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you learned anything or you disagree with anything from this video. Your feedback is always appreciated. If there are other locations you're curious about, put those in the comments too. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.